The following is a special presentation of the Simulation Football League. Second time in this quarter on a third and long. Tyree and Portis are able to deliver. Coleman hands it off to Black. Black breaks a tackle. Black with a step on. There he goes! Black! You've got to be kidding me! 72 yards! Touchdown, Houston! At the 11, back to pass, swing out Bose. Bose just beat the defense. Oh, done, Bose! Stiff arm extraordinaire, touchdown, Minneapolis! It's the SFL live on Twitch TV. everyone welcome to Tallahassee Florida tonight it's a winner take all situation the six and five Tallahassee Pride hosts the five and six Carolina Skyhawks for the fourth and final clinched Teal Conference playoff spot good evening I'm your play-by-play -play commentator Cameron Irvine the two met a few weeks ago Carolina's dominant second quarter led the Skyhawks to a victory. But Tallahassee's on a recent upswing of momentum. Let's head down to the field for the coin toss. The Demons will make the selection. What is the call? Give us tails. Tails it is. We'll kick. The Demons have won the toss and select a kick. Carolina will kick. Jamie Hart has the ball on the tee. This is the start of a mega epic week 12 on the SFL Network. Carolina, kick it or underway. From the 11. Tallahassee on a return up to the 30. The Tallahassee Pride wearing a gold out with the uh, gold jerseys and pants along with the gold and yellow paws, purple trim, purple helmets. Interesting getup for Tallahassee. Carolina in the standard road, blue helmets, white jerseys, white pants, blue numbers, red trim. First and ten, the handoff goes to Dwayne Lane, and Dwayne Lane will not be brought down until the Carolina 44. Maurice Spurgeon saves the touchdown, but what a run from Dwayne Lane to start the ball game. One, two, three people had a shot at Dwayne Lane before he was finally brought down. Dwayne Lane, 245 carries, 1,690 yards this season. 16 touchdowns, averages 154 yards per game. That's tops among running backs uh, that are not gold players. As Alexander West pass is incomplete, there's a flag down. I believe the uh, ball hit a lineman. Illegal forward pass, number seven, offense. Loss a down, and they spot the ball. Wow, that is an incredible penalty there on Tallahassee. They lose seven yards and the down because they said that Alexander West 
when he threw it was beyond the line of scrimmage. They're going to challenge. That is a very odd call. Well, we've got some drama already early on here. I mean, there's just, there's, there's no way the, his entire body is beyond the, is uh, behind the line of scrimmage. After review, the passer was behind the line of scrimmage at the time of the throw. There is no penalty. The home team will not be charged with a timeout. Second down. Wow, so the refs will even take the penalty off the board. Nice challenge from Tallahassee here in the opening minute. It will just simply be an incomplete pass. And a second down and 10. Two receivers off to the left, or to the right side, rather, for Alexander West, the quarterback for Tallahassee. West back to pass, and West will fire left side. Open is Jerome Logan, and Logan picks up eight yards, rumbling out of bounds from the Carolina 37-yard line. Let's meet the Tallahassee Pride offensive stars. Quarterback Alexander West, number seven, six foot four, 233. Running back is Dwayne Lanes, 5'10", 231. The wide receivers on the outside, number 88, Jordan Jennings, and number 81, Calvin Kidd. The two tight ends set, number 80, Asante Dolman, and number 75, Jerome Logan. Third down and two at the 37. Opening minute of this winner-take-all contest on a special Saturday night edition of the SFL. West deep down the field, caught one-handed by Jordan Jennings. For a first down to the Skyhawks 16 and into the red zone on Tallahassee's opening drive. Let's meet the Carolina Skyhawk defense, led by three linebackers up front. Number 56, Gage Wilson. Number 53, Bobby Long. Number 52, Jeb Gatlin. Cornerbacks are number 21, Maurice Spurgeon, and number 25, June Fierro. Strong safety is number 49, Billy Joe Gatlin. And the free safety making his return to, Carol, uh, to Tallahassee for the first time since signing with Carolina, number 41, Julius O'Neal, who had a phenomenal game against the Tallahassee Pride the first time around. Tallahassee six and five, Carolina five and six, but because Carolina won the first game of the series, Carolina can get into the playoffs with a sweep of the Pride in the head-to-head -head tiger. Dwayne Lane will get the carry right side. Lane inside the 10, and Dwayne Lane's got a touchdown for the Pride. It took just two minutes and four seconds off the clock, but Tallahassee gets in. Extra point coming for Angelo Martinez. Martinez's extra point is good. Tallahassee 7, Carolina nothing. It's a high 60s degree night here in Florida. We've had a lot of uh, scattered showers and a few thunderstorms, but uh, nothing affecting it what would appear our uh, couple hour window here of game time here at Pride Park, where the Tallahassee Pride have lost just once in franchise history earlier this season. A ugly 24 to 7 loss to louisville in which they turned the ball over seven times this is a deep kick from martinez returned out past the 15 but not past the 20 out to just the 19 yard line johnny english for carolina 55 yards needed for a 2000 yard season 5.9 yards per carry 21 rushing touchdowns averages 177 yards per game first and 10. He is number 24 and the unquestioned leader of this Carolina offense. And he is the low man in the backfield on a first and 10 at the 19. Monroe back to pass. And Monroe fires short and the pass is dropped. Not a good start for Carolina. Let's meet the Tallahassee defensive stars. Cornerback Darian McCormick is number 22, 6'3", 204. Grayson Rivers is opposite him, number 29. 
the linebackers, former OKC renegade and sixth season veteran of the SFL, number 51, Adam Stackhouse. The strong safety is number 33, A.J. Barnes, and the free safety is number 41, Troy Minerva. Second and 10 at the 19. Split backs in the backfield. English gets his first carry of the night, and English is stopped quickly by Barnes. A pickup of just two to set up a third down and eight. Carolina's on a downswing. They've lost two in a row, and five of their last seven overall after a three and one start to the season. They lost to Louisville in a solid effort on the road, 31-21, but got tripped up by Dallas for the second time this season. A 13-10 loss in overtime when the offense really struggled. Monroe to pass on third down and eight. Deep shot, that pass is intercepted at midfield. Return past the 40 and to the 36-yard line. It is Grayson Rivers with the INT and a Tallahassee first down. All pride here early in the first few minutes. A double move from Yuya Iba back inside does not fool Rivers. Meanwhile, as we uh, spoke on Carolina's recent struggles, Tallahassee's in the opposite boat. They started the season two of three. They've won four of their last six games and three straight overall. They lost that 24-7 game to Louisville and then were tripped up by Carolina on the road 34-20 uh, a little over a month ago as Dwayne Lane takes the handoff. He will pick up a first down to the 25-yard line, pick up of 11 yards. But after that, it has been all Tallahassee. 55-31 over Santa Fe. 23-16 over Orlando as they had to gut that one out. And then a 45-35 victory over Oklahoma City. The offense for the Pride, 123 points in the last three weeks. And off to Lane. Lane's got another first down to the right side, down to the 12. Dwayne Lane is running all over Carolina in the first quarter of play. And this has been a cakewalk for Tallahassee thus far. First down and 10 at the 12. Jennings top of the screen. In the backfield, West straight back will flip it outside. Pass caught by the fullback. He ends up picking up seven. Down the sideline, near side of the five. Action around the league. Bunch of action around the league tonight. Louisville and Orlando squaring off on SFLN2. Houston and Oklahoma City doing battle on SFLN3. And two games that you can view on our YouTube channel and uh, discuss live with the group. NYC is at Baltimore. And Dallas hosts Santa Fe. Second and three for the five. Wayne Lane takes the handoff. There's a face mask penalty on Carolina. That'll move the ball probably down to the one yard line. Looks like it may have been incidental. Face mask, number 52. Uh, calling a personal foul. It's on Jeff Gatlin. And that is down to the goal line. And a first down as well for Tallahassee. Bad penalty there from Jeb Gatlin. As it's been Tallahassee, not Carolina, who's had all the momentum. Carolina, uh, if you remember back in that 34-20 game, it was the game that was scheduled to be commentated, but we had to, uh, uh, we, we did not air that day. But Carolina scored 31 unanswered points all in the second quarter uh, when they just steamrolled the pride in that first meeting. First and goal at the goal line, and Dwayne Lane walks in for another touchdown. And the Skyhawks better wake up. Their season's on the line. The Pride looked like a totally different team. since those back-to-back -back losses against Louisville and Carolina. 3-0, trying to go 4-0 down the stretch here. As the Pride were just 3-5 with four games to go. Angelo Martinez's extra point is up and good. It's Tallahassee 14, Carolina nothing.
Let's take a look at the Teal standings coming into the night. Orlando can get the, the number two spot with a Houston loss and an Orlando victory. Tallahassee can get the third spot with an Orlando loss and a Tallahassee victory. Uh, plus, uh, Tallahassee needs to make up uh, ground in the point differential department. They're down 14 points to Orlando. So, for example, if Orlando were to lose by three tonight, Tallahassee would have to win by 12 in this game to win that tiebreaker. Uh, Carolina is locked into that four spot if they win. Otherwise, uh, Carolina's loss plus a Dallas win could end up putting the Skyhawks all the way down in six places. The Dallas has been playing some better football as of late. And Louisville's sitting pretty at number one. First and ten at the 23. Second possession for Carolina's offense. Two in the backfield with Monroe. Back to pass Monroe. Swings it outside. Pass is caught by Iba. Pick up the four yards. Let's meet the Carolina Skyhawk offense. Quarterback is number nine, Jamison Monroe. Six foot two, 190. Johnny English is the running back, number 24. The receivers on the outside are number 87, Caesar Cannon. Number 13, Yuya Iba. The tight end is number 88, Shan Varner. Second and six at the 27. The Skyhawks have... Yet to move the chains through an interception on the third play of the previous drive. Monroe doesn't like the play that was called. Going to change it. 3-4 defense for Tallahassee. Toss play out to English. English is in deep trouble. And English back to the original line of scrimmage. Lost four yards. Grayson Rivers on the tackle who's had a phenomenal start to this game. Who, who did not appreciate a bump there from a Skyhawk offensive lineman. Grayson Rivers... Three interceptions now on the season. 52 tackles, one tackle for loss. Third down and 10 for Carolina. Four receivers, three to the left side. Back to pass Monroe, and Monroe will flip it outside. That pass is caught, yeah, but short of the first down. Well short of the first down. Caesar Cannon with his first catch of the night. It'll be fourth and five at the 28-yard line. Six plays, no first downs. A turnover and a punt for the Skyhawks. And they've given up two touchdowns here early on. Skyhawks punt it away. From the 36, Tallahassee will start their next drive at the 39-yard line with 4.48 to go in the first quarter. Pride start their third possession of the game from the 39 yard line. This is the SFL Saturday spotlight game to kick off week 12. I'm your play-by-play -play commentator Cameron Irvine. Tallahassee in the driver's seat thus far tonight. Sidearm throw, what a catch in traffic by Jordan Jennings, pickup of five yards. Jordan Jennings, 83 catches, 1,285 yards on the season, 11 touchdowns. Clearly the leading weapon in the passing game for the Pride this year, averaging 116.8 yards per game. Second down and five at the 43. Offside, Carolina, free play for West. That's got a first down to Dolman. He sheds a tackle and gets to about the 47, a pickup of 10 yards. Penalty will be declined, but Carolina just cannot compete with the pride right now. Tallahassee, of course, one of the final four teams left standing last year. They fell to Santa Fe in the league's semifinal. Of course, D.C. beat Louisville in the other semi. Tallahassee and Louisville potentially could uh, be playing in the first round if uh, the chips fall where they may. First and 10 at the 47-yard line. The pride up by 14. And the handoff goes to Dwayne Lane. Dwayne Lane stops and starts again. Picks up five to the 41. June Fierro on the tackle. But seven carries for 70 yards here in the first quarter for Dwayne Lane. 
Carolina, of course, got off to that 3-1 and one start. Everyone was just absolutely stunned at uh, how well the Skyhawks started the season with a brand new ownership that came in uh, just about a month before the season began and a brand new coaching staff as well. They sort of uh, turned everything around as uh, Lane takes the handoff. That's another Tallahassee first down. But like the Honolulu legends of uh, the franchise's old history, Carolina has uh, faltered down the stretch as teams like uh, Tallahassee and Orlando and all those guys have uh, gotten their act together. Two in the backfield, first and 10 at the 35. Carolina's got to stop the bleeding here at some point. Hand off the lane right side. Lane is just rushing the right side of Carolina's defense. I haven't seen a single carry to the left side so far tonight. Everything's coming towards you on your viewing screen. Billy Joe Gatlin on the stop. Tallahassee could not have dominated this quarter any further. Jennings, top of the screen. Kelvin Kidd, who does not have a catch yet. Bottom of the screen. Logan and Dolman have catches already as well. West back to pass, down the middle of the field. Boy, Jennings got hung up. I'm surprised that there was no P.I. on that. Jennings was trying to cut across the middle, and he just got walled off. And a rare incompletion from Alexander West here in the first quarter. Second down and 10. Alexander West still averaging over three interceptions per game. 34 interceptions to 21 touchdowns. He has been a mess for uh, the majority of this season. But Dwayne Lane is helping West in the pride extend the lead. What a shocker here in the first quarter. This Carolina defense has done well for themselves. Uh, dating back really to for the last month and a half, they allowed Orlando just 24 points, Dallas just 27, Tallahassee just 20 in the first meeting, 16 to the Renegades, and uh, probably most impressively just 31 points allowed uh, against the Louisville Wolfpack on the road in that 10 point loss. They gave up just 13 points last week, and it took Dallas overtime to get that many. And Tallahassee in the first quarter, 21 to nothing. And the pride looked prime and ready for a serious playoff push. Carolina's just got to th take things one step at a time. They haven't even gotten a first down yet. This return just barely crossed the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at the gray standings. You see the three-way tie right now favoring Queen City. Baltimore is already in because they clinched the Coastal Division. And uh, Baltimore is the only game going on tonight. If they win, that keeps the D.C. Dragons' playoff hopes alive. If they lose, the Dragons are eliminated. Johnny English breaks off a tackle for the first time today. Johnny English in the open field. Pickup of 26 yards out to the 48-yard line. NYC and Baltimore, the only gray conference game of the night. But Johnny English... Breaking free from Stackhouse. Finally gets Carolina's offense going as Rivers and Barnes combine on the stop. You know, everyone wants to talk about Stevie T. Diggs. He's got 10 interceptions. Everyone wants to talk about Ivan Mixon. He's got 10 interceptions. But what most people don't realize is that there is another player in this league with 10 interceptions, and that is the rookie, A.J. Barnes who also has 95 tackles, second on the team. As Johnny English loses two yards, he's lost twice on that toss out to the right side. Stackhouse picks up the TFL to bring up second down and 12. But A.J. Barnes arguably is in the running for Rookie of the Year just 
because of what he's done, not only in the interception game, along with 112 uh, interception return yards, but what he's done just in the tackling department for Tallahassee. As English takes another toss and lost three more. Third down and 15. As Foreman grills English in the backfield. Carolina won first down and a 21-point deficit here in the first quarter. Back to pass, Monroe. And Monroe fires it deep. That pass is overthrown. He had Iba open. And Monroe couldn't make the connection. Another punt coming here for Carolina. That's a tough break for the Skyhawks. Had an open receiver down the field for the first time today. Just rushed the throw a bit. Bright on a return from the 21 yard line up to the 25 and Tallahassee is sure getting revenge on Carolina's 31 point second quarter from a few uh, five weeks ago. Speak to Alexander West numbers, 254 of 366, 69.4 completion percentage, 3,165 yards, does average 288 yards per game. But those interceptions have just been killer. First and 10 at the 25, hand off Dwayne Lane. Right side again, and Dwayne Lane's got a first down. Boy, did the pride see something on film with the Skyhawk defense off to the right side. They just continue to hammer the run game down the Skyhawks' throats, and, and Carolina's run defense has, has not been that bad this year. Billy Joe Gatlin leads the Skyhawk defense with 90 tackles. Blitz showing right side again for Dwayne Lane. There he goes. Dwayne Lane past midfield. Oh, my goodness. Tallahassee down to the 31-yard line. This is Blitzkrieg out there, man. I mean, they are just, they're, they're not doing anything fancy. They are just handing the ball off to Dwayne Lane. They're not even going up the middle or to the left. They're just... Going to the right side and putting the serious hurt on the Carolina Skyhawks in a shocking first quarter. Final play of the first quarter. West's in trouble and West is going to be sacked outside of field goal range for a loss of eight. And finally, Carolina is able to let out their frustrations. Bart Eller with the sack. That's the end of the first quarter. Carolina nothing, Tallahassee 21 in a stunner. Pride all over the place. This is the SFL Network. Pass is caught down the field for a 13-yard pickup. Kelvin Kidd's first catch of the game. Kidd's slow to get up, but uh, West has been efficient. Turnover free football. And boy, he waited for Kidd to cross right behind Gage Wilson. That was a perfectly timed pass. And the Pride are back into scoring position again. And the only thing Carolina can hope for at this point is that Alexander West interception averages start catching up to him out of the gun west back to pass and west fires it left right side that pass is caught they say he's short now tallahassee's already won one challenge this may be worth another 
as Kelvin Kidd caught the pass on the sideline. And Tallahassee will challenge again. They're trying to go two for two here early on. The home team are challenging the spot of the ball. Let's take a gander. This looked like a catch and passed the stick. Well, it's certainly a catch. But this football crosses. Man, it's right at the sticks. Now, the question is, did the ball actually get past the sticks? That was incredibly close. After review, the play stands. The call on the field was correct. The home team. I think that's a good call by the officials. Fourth down. There, there was no clear, uh, indisputable evidence that that ball crossed the stick. Now, there's no doubt that it was on the unofficial yellow line, but uh, there was, there just wasn't enough evidence there, and it cost Tallahassee a timeout. They'll have to kick the field goal from 38 yards away on the right hash mark. Angelo Martinez, first attempt of the day, and his kick is on its way and good. And Tallahassee has scored four times on their first four possessions. a three score game but Carolina in some major trouble from the five Carolina on the return past the 20 nice move nice move again solid return there up to the 26 yard line for Brooks I believe yes right on the money First and 10 at the 26 for Carolina. One first down and a 24-point deficit with the season on the line. Monroe goes under center. English is the lone man in the backfield who's been shut down all but one run. Monroe's in trouble. That pass is incomplete. Pressure all up in Monroe's face immediately from Hunt on the prowl. Second and 10. Tallahassee trying to go 10 and 1 all time here at Pride Park. Got the one playoff win over Baltimore. Doesn't look like they'll host a first, well, they can't host a first round playoff game. Maybe uh, with a, an upset or two, the Pride could host a uh, Teal Conference semifinal. Pass caught by Iba, pickup of nine yards. Monroe up to a measly 17 here in the first half. Third down and one. First third and short situation all day for Carolina. And they just, they need to take a lot of time off this clock and get some points up on the board. Three in the backfield with Johnny English. And a play action pass. English is open, they try, they went outside and Cannon was out of bounds. English and Cannon both were open, nice play design. But Cannon was out. Will we get a challenge from Carolina? No. And he looked out on first glance, and Cannon just ran his route. Too far out of bounds. That should have been a first down. Oh, absolute disaster for the Skyhawks. This first half has been a mess for them. From the 24-yard line, Tallahassee up to the 28, 9-16. Still going in the first half. Got a long way to go in this one. Skyhawks have had no answer for Dwayne Lane. First and 10, two in the backfield for Tallahassee, two to the left side. I believe that's Dolman off the line. And off Lane, cuts middle for the first time, picks up solid eight yards. Wayne Lane already 164 yards in this game. 
That is redonkulous. Last time the two teams played, Dwayne Lane, 17 carries, 66 yards. I'd say Lane's having a better showing against the Skyhawks a second time around. Second and two, handoff to Lane. Lane bounces off a tackle, nearly got the first down. Jeb Gatlin saved the move of the chains, third down and inches. Career high for Dwayne Lane. It came against Santa Fe earlier this year. 267 yards on 25 carries. And then again against Santa Fe at 250 yards on just 15 carries uh, on March 3rd. Also had 258 yards against Dallas in the season opener. Third down and inches. Dwayne Lane has a first down to the 40-yard line. And here's a fun fact. In games where Dwayne Lane runs for over 200 yards this season, Tallahassee has 50, 36, and 55 points. When Dwayne Lane's going, Tallahassee's going. First and 10 at the 40. Empty backfield for West. 7.46 to go in the first half. West back to pass. West is in trouble, and he's thrown down. Loss of five. Both defensive lines have been getting pressure on the quarterbacks. And it makes it a more challenging second down now for Tallahassee. Champ Gibbs comes flying off the left side to pick up the sack. Coming up on the SFL Update halftime report, we'll have first half analysis from Carolina and Tallahassee. West to throw against a blitz. They rush six and the pass is caught. Over the middle of the field, the Dolman in one-on-one -on -one coverage with Wilson. Down to the Skyhawk, 38-yard line. First down, Tallahassee. Blitz was picked up nicely. One-on-one -on -one coverage, and all West had to do was float it over the top to his big man. And Asante Dolman did the rest. Make sure to every Wednesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, join Doug Bose, Ed Ritter, and the in Inside the SFL podcast crew on TalkShoe.com. Just search Inside the SFL TalkShoe on Google to uh, find the link and uh, join in on the conversation. Pick up a three yards for Dwayne Lane on the reception. This Tallahassee drive has been their longest of the day as we approach the halfway mark of the first half. Pride slamming Carolina in a game that both teams needed equally. And off to Dwayne Lane, and Lane picks up a couple. This is not good news for the Orlando Intimidators. Orlando could fall to fourth with a loss to Louisville. They're neck and neck so far tonight from the Dome, uh, just a few miles south of Tallahassee. And off to Dwayne Lane. Lane's got a first down, but uh, Tallahassee just needed to make up 14 points uh, in point differential with a 24-point victory. All they need at this point is an Orlando loss, and Tallahassee's in good shape. It would be Tallahassee and Houston in the 2-3 matchup, and Orlando would have to see Louisville for a second consecutive week. Back to pass West, swing outside, pass caught by Jennings. Pick up a four. Second and six of the Carolina 24. Probably the most impressive thing about uh, Tallahassee tonight so far is that they have not turned the ball over. Tallahassee this season, they have forced 24 turnovers. Dwayne Lane on the carry. It'll bring up third down. Forced 24 turnovers and uh, 34 interceptions by Alexander West, so they're at least minus 10 in the turnover department. 
Don't have a fumble stats handy. Third and four at the 22-yard line. Tallahassee's converted every third down known to man as Dwayne Lane's fighting for yardage. Can't pick it up. Field goal unit will come back out onto the field, but more importantly, it'll make it a four-score game here late in the first half. 27 to nothing with a Martinez make. Martinez has missed just one field goal on the season. He's now 22 of 23 with a long of 48 yards. Had one blocked. This field goal a little closer than the previous. 36-yard variety now from the left hash. Snap is perfect. Hold is good. And the kick is good. Tallahassee continues to pad their lead. 27-0. Now over Carolina. Just un, really just absolutely unbelievable. Just shocking the egg that Carolina has led here in the first half, particularly uh, considering that, that so many games in recent weeks have been so close as the competition has just ratcheted up. Not sure who was injured on the play. But Tallahassee, can, or uh, Carolina rather, cannot afford any casualties. McCormick's been quiet. He won't be tested as much as he will in, uh, against other teams. Carolina likes to run the ball more than pass, but Monroe's been trying to uh, force the issue down the field. That pass is tipped and nearly caught. And then uh, Cannon took a shot. That could have been six for Carolina as Cannon tried to keep his eye on the ball. But the pass incomplete. We haven't really seen a lot of inside runs out of Johnny English in the first half. We've seen a few tosses that have all gone for, gone for losses. Had the one run to the uh, outside left where he broke for Carolina's lone first down. But otherwise, that's been it for English. Offside, free play. And English lost more yards in the backfield. Neutral zone infraction, number 93, defense, five-yard penalty. But the TFL will be wiped away. It'll be second down and five. Johnny English has been held under 100 yards three times this year, but has not been held uh, uh, under 100 yards in, uh, in over a month. He had 32 carries for 11 yards against Dallas, 59 yards on 32 carries against Orlando. 91 yards on 40 carries against Houston. Johnny English again loses yardage. This time, Troy Minerva in on the stop. Under three to play here in the first half. A shocker. with four other pretty good ball games going on across the networks. Third down and six. Back to pass Monroe down the field. Dropped. Incomplete and another punt coming for Carolina. Man, I have, I just, I've never seen Carolina so inept. They have had offensive woes, but this is just ridiculous. Tallahassee can do no wrong tonight up to the 35-yard line. Even in the 13-10 loss to Dallas, Carolina had 13 first downs. They have just one here in the first half. Yeah. 
And I don't think Carolina has more than 50 yards of offense. Two in the backfield for West as uh, Tallahassee tries to pad their lead. Dwayne Lane is wrapped up for one of the first times all night. Otis Givens was the player hurt. He will not be back. Defensive tackle for Tallahassee. Gibbs on that last tackle picks up one for uh, Tallahassee. Uh, tackle for the Skyhawks, rather. Second down and nine at the 36, trying to get one more playoff before the two-minute warning. They will not. Tallahassee 27, Carolina nothing. The Skyhawks can't believe it. This is the SFL Network. Second and nine of the 36, West back to pass, fires down the field, oh, the pass should have been intercepted right into the hands of Billy Joe Gatlin. And uh, surprisingly enough, that uh, hasn't been the first time Gatlin struggled to reel in an interception. He does not have an interception this season. Even his brother, Jeb Gatlin, has a pick at linebacker, but Billy Joe Gatlin, who leads the team in tackles with 90, has not been able to get his hands on an INT. Third down and nine for the Pride, who have scored on all five of their possessions in the first half. Back to pass, West. West fires right side, pass caught. Corner could not be turned. And finally, Carolina's defense gets a stop. Kelvin Kidd with that last catch. Tallahassee to punt it away. Read the blogs, visit the boards every day on simulationfl.com. Start conversation and be a part of the SFL family and community at simulationfl.com. First and 10 at the 26. 1.45 to go in the first half. Carolina shut out, one first down, looking for some sort of big play that can maybe uh, get momentum back to them in this game. They do get the ball to start the second half, so they could uh, score on two straight possessions here if they're smart. Monroe hands it off to English, left side. English has blockers. English near a first down, picks up nine. 28 yards, but got 27 of those yards on that long run early in the first quarter on uh, seven carries. That was just his second run for positive yardage here in the first half. Unbelievable. Second and short at the 36. Monroe's out of the gun. Hand off English, and English got the first down. Nearly broke free. He would have scored on that. Wrapped up at the 41-yard line. No huddle for Carolina. 106 to go in the first half. Monroe back to pass. Monroe will have to swing it out to English, whose momentum carries him out of bounds. With 59 seconds on the clock, second and long. Monroe, play action pass, dumps it short. English going the wrong way, finally turns the Jets around, picks it just two, sets up a third down and long, and Carolina will burn a timeout, hoping to try to make something out of this drive. Shan Varner has been quiet in his first half, and he's really been non-existent for this team. Just 16 catches in 11 games coming in. Pride Park on their feet. Four receivers, three to the left side. Monroe back to pass. Monroe fires down the field. The pass is intercepted. Unbelievable at the 30-yard line. That's Grayson Rivers again with his second interception of the game. Rivers, two interceptions all season. 
has two in the first half as Monroe tried to hit Iba inside once again, Cannon on the tackle. Yikes. Back to pass, West. Fires down the field, pass is incomplete. Intended for Asante Dolman. Asante Dolman, since he uh, found a home in Tallahassee, yeah, Tallahassee's wanted Dolman on their team from the beginning. And Dolman is actually 82 yards away from a 1,000-yard season. I'm not sure that a tight end in the SFL has ever had a 1,000-yard receiving season. Second and 10 of the 40, West back to pass. Deep drop back, fires left side, pass caught right in front of two Carolina Skyhawk defenders, O'Neal and Spurgeon. Jennings with the catch. Two timeouts for Carolina or Tallahassee as they rush to the line. Back to pass, West. West looking for somebody, nearly sacked, got away, throws it down the field, what a throw! Kelvin Kidd down to the 26-yard line and out of bounds with 20 seconds to go. West avoids a sack once and then again and somehow had enough time to look down the field and find Kelvin Kidd. What an unbelievable throw. And Tallahassee preserves both timeouts and back into scoring position. Five of six on scoring drives are the pride. Trying to make it six for seven. West back to pass. And West will fire down the field. The pass is caught. Unbelievable. Wide open. An embarrassing showing out of Carolina. Here in the first half. Tallahassee's the real deal, folks. I would not want to play this. I would not want to have to play this team next week. Tallahassee's lowest point total given up this season is 16 when Orlando scored just 16 points a couple of weeks ago. Right now, a big fat goose egg for Carolina, whose offense has struggled mightily in the last few weeks. A 34-0 smackdown on the Skyhawks, and we've yet to hit halftime. Tallahassee in the last three weeks averaging over 40 points per game. They're likely going to hit that average today. And all Carolina can do is lick their wounds and hope that they can get a 14-point swing of some sort in the third quarter. First and 10 from the Demons. And the Skyhawks, not an offense built to come back in a game. Very possession-based style. Monroe's going to throw. Goes, oh, it's picked off again. Oh, my goodness. What a disaster. What a disaster. The Pride fans are going ballistic. Leo Evans. They toss it right over the middle, looking for Iba again. All three of Monroe's interceptions in this first half have been passes intended for Yuya Iba. And uh, Tallahassee can uh, score more points as they bring out Angelo Martinez to tack on another 38-yard field goal before the end of the half. The field goal is good. 
I mean, you almost never see in the SFL, particularly this season, blowouts of this magnitude. We just haven't had them. The competition has been so good. And I'm, I'm looking back through, and we'll, we'll get to it more in the second half, but the biggest blowouts of the year in the, uh, in the Teal Conference. And where this one compares, I mean, this Tallahassee performance has been nothing short of spectacular. As Carolina's kickoff return leaves two seconds still on the clock, 23-yard line on a return uh, by Brooks. Just off the top of my head, Houston and Louisville was 41-7 to at the half, but that was a 34-point margin. This is a 37-point margin for Tallahassee. Final play of a first half that Carolina wants to forget as that pass is dropped by Jones on the outside, summarizing the last 22 minutes of football. Carolina nothing, Tallahassee 37. The SFL Update Halftime Report is coming up next.
Welcome to the SML Update Halftime Report. Carolina is down 37 to nothing. And these numbers are eye-popping. 349 yards of total offense for Tallahassee to just 51 for Carolina. The Skyhawks have four first downs and three turnovers. 15 first downs for Tallahassee, and they've possessed the ball nearly 15 of the uh, 22 first half minutes. Couldn't even put a key player for Carolina uh, up on the board, but it's worth noting that Johnny English has just two, uh, two of his nine touches of the football have been uh, for positive yardage. Actually, two of the 10. He's got a couple of receptions, but just for one yard. Three of the 10, I should say. He had a two yard catch, had a big 27 yard run, and then a nine yard run. But otherwise, it's all been be, uh, behind the line of scrimmage for Johnny English. Grayson Rivers, four tackles, has two picks, which is as many as he had coming into the game, and one tackle for loss. Dwayne Lane, 19 carries, 180 yards, three touchdowns. Dwayne Lane needs 20 yards to get to 200. If he does, then Tallahassee would be well on their way to being 4-0 and scoring at least 35 points when Dwayne Lane rushes for over 200 yards. It's all Tallahassee right now as Orlando, Louisville, Houston, Oklahoma City, uh, as that game has been insane. NYC and Baltimore and Dallas and Santa Fe are all neck and neck across the SFL family of networks. Don't go anywhere. You won't want to miss the conclusion of all of tonight's action. Carolina's in deep trouble. This is the SFL Network. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and make sure never to miss a moment of the action by following our channel on Twitch. This has been SFL Halftime Update. Enjoy the second half. What does it mean to rise, to be better, to be stronger, to be tougher, to be a hero, to be a savior? The SFL believes it's time for you to rise, to hit harder run faster to be a person who conquered. In the SFL, being better, stronger, tougher as a player, coach, or owner means finding your energy, finding your identity, finding your inner glory. As we live our lives, we're not the most athletically gifted. We scream in frustration. I could do better. I'd be an amazing football player. I'd be a better play caller. I'd run an incredible franchise. Welcome to the SFL, where you can rise. Rise as one.
60,000 plus people were really happy with that first half performance here in Tallahassee. The uh, Carolina fans and supporters and that bench over on that far side did not like it one bit. First and 10 at the 18 for the Skyhawks. They now have to begin a furious rally as Johnny English picks up just two but is uh, pushed out of bounds. Now his fourth play of positive yardage here in this game. Monroe, 19 yards passing and three picks in that first half. We're talking about the biggest blowouts uh, in the league this year. That Louisville-Houston game ended up being a 20-point margin, 21-point margin between Louisville and uh, Tallahassee. Monroe, deep shot down the field, finally makes a connection. Iba to the Tallahassee 48-yard line. Monroe continues to test the Grayson Rivers waters, but finally gets a big play down the field, and that's nearly for as many yards as Carolina had on offense in the first half. First and 10, ball at the 47 yard. Big throw. Louisville beat OKC by 42 earlier this year. English takes the swing out, picks up four. It was a 52 to 10 final. But really, that has been the only significant blowout. Santa Fe beat OKC 51-28, 23-point win. Tallahassee beat Santa Fe 55-31. That was a 24-point win as Monroe's now up to 56 yards. But uh, this, is, this is something else. Second and six of the Tallahassee 44. English takes the handoff. English again. No game. They just cannot find room for Johnny English. And the league's uh, top back coming into week 12 may end up falling short of two, a 2,000-yard season. Three receivers, two to the right side, ball on the right hash. Back to pass, Monroe. Monroe fires down the field. That pass is dropped. Fourth down, just like that, Adam Stackhouse in on the coverage. Allen Powers, the fullback, was the intended receiver. He was open, and he just dropped it. That's the second drop, third drop of note that I can remember for the Carolina Skyhawks. They're outside of field goal range. They're going to have to punt this ball. No end in sight for Tallahassee's or for Carolina's woes here this uh, this evening. Back to the blowouts. Queen City beat NYC by 28. That was way back in week one. From the 11, uh, Tallahassee on a return to the 14 yard line. Great conference has been razor close. Minneapolis beat Cleveland 41-7. Uh, that was a 34-point margin of victory. Dwayne Lane. 37-point margin of victory when the Maulers defeated San Francisco 44-7. So that's about where uh, we're at at the moment as Dwayne Lane picks up five yards. See, Lane is trying to get his fourth 200-yard game of the season. Number 49, credited with the tackle. Second and four, ball at the 19-yard line. Second down, five, two in the backfield. And off the lane, and Lane's got a first down and a lot more. 13-yard pickup. The crowd's even a little bit uh, tired and exhausted from cheering. As the pride growl heard loud and clear across the stadium. Even the hometown fans starting to feel a little bit bad for Carolina. 
Man, in a winner-take-all game, you just you just expected and thought that Carolina would come out with a with more meaning, with more uh, passion, with with so much on the line, a chance to get into the playoffs as first-year owners joining uh, Houston and Sioux Falls, uh, who achieved those honors this year, and many others who have achieved those honors in the past. And none of that. 37-0, second and eight for Tallahassee, who has stayed turnover free. Dwayne Lane picks up two. Number 23 with the carry. A pickup of three on the play. Number 40 with the tackle. Third down and six now for the Pride. Ball at the 37 yard. Two receivers off to the right side. West going to throw. And West goes down the field. Pass is incomplete. So Carolina gets a stop. Monday night, Cleveland at Sioux Falls. And uh, we'll know a little bit more about what that game means uh, to the uh, to the broader picture, we know that uh, Cleveland needs a win and some help. We know that Sioux Falls uh, has already clinched a playoff spot. But other than that, things still a bit of a mystery as uh, Baltimore getting a nice, uh, healthy challenge from NYC tonight in Baltimore. As the Crabs try to avoid losing three in a row, heading into the playoffs from the 23, Carolina on a return up to the 30. 7.09 to go in the third. Back-to-back -back punts to start the second half as Tallahassee still maintaining a five-score advantage. And I don't think anyone in their right mind believes that Carolina's going to come back and win this game. Largest league comeback is 20. And we're already in the second half. Hand off English. English needs to get angry. Picks up two, second and eight. Johnny English, who's a six, uh, six season veteran. You, you feel bad for the guy. He's one of the he's one of the highest paid players in the league. But Johnny English, if I'm remembering correctly, English has never made the playoffs. Um, he, he may have made it the one year that Honolulu got spanked by Minneapolis in the first round back in season four. That pass is intercepted. That is Troy Minerva with the INT and another turnover for Carolina. Minerva's third interception of the season, so Minerva and Rivers padding their stats late in the year. Pass intended for Cannon, and everything up the middle of the field has been taken away by Tallahassee. But Johnny English in his one year uh, that Dallas made the playoffs, if I remember correctly, English was hurt and did not play in that game. They uh, lost badly at Orlando. West is sacked. Loss of nine on the play. And one thing Carolina has done well tonight is sack the quarterback. Something you can uh, take home with you. Second and 19. Ball at the 45 yard line. At the end of the day, Carolina just could not win games within the division. They finished two and four. They beat Orlando back in week one on a game-winning field goal and then had that big second quarter. And that's a, they said it was a catch, third down and long, coming up as a Dolman was the man to make the catch. West, 169 yards, but more importantly, has a kept the sheet clean. Third and 16. From but two and four against the division. They uh, lost two close battles with uh, Louisville, 12 and 10 point losses. This by far Carolina's worst showing, and it could not have come at a worse time. They do get another stop on Dwayne Lane in the Pride offense. June Fierro on the tackle will set up a fourth down and 13. And speaking of June Fierro, the guy sort of disappeared this year. He had, uh, coming into this season, one, one of, if not the best years that a cornerback has ever had in this league. Five picks for 19 return yards this year. Nothing too flashy. 
with 69 tackles, three tackles for loss. This punt will bounce inside the 10 and roll into the end zone. So Tallahassee's momentum has slowed here in the third quarter. No score by either squad in the third, but Tallahassee's defense has still been ruthless. Plus four in the turnover department. First and ten. From and this kind of has that feeling of, I'm trying to remember what year it was in the NFC East when uh, the Dallas Cowboys came out and they just laid an egg um, when they had an opportunity in a winner-take-all game. That pass is nearly taken away. Cannon was the intended receiver. Minerva again on the coverage. Boy, maybe Tallahassee should wear these uh, gold unis more often <laughs> because... They're, they're playing like gold tonight. Unbelievable. And now Orlando has to be feeling a bit nervous. Still in a contested battle with Louisville. Orlando pretty much has to win uh, as this result continues to stand as Tallahassee has put the pressure on. Nice grab on the sideline by Caesar Cannon, who makes just his third catch of the night. That'll move the chains to the 41-yard line. This is great concentration by Caesar Cannon has to turn around and find the football. Has the presence of mind to just stop. Locate the ball and make the play. First and ten from the Demons, 41 yard line. Two receivers, one to either side for Carolina. Toss play out to English left side. English breaks the tackle. English still on his feet, but picks up just seven yards. This has been a fast-moving third quarter here. As Carolina has made no dent into this pride margin that they built so quickly. English on the carry, left side, picks up two. This Tallahassee team tonight was like a tornado. Carolina was warned coming into the game. Tallahassee's been doing pretty good, winners of three in a row. And then uh, before you know it, the whole house was gone. Third and five at the 47, flip out to English. And English is going to be stood up. That's a loss of one. Adam Stackhouse on the tackle behind the line. Fourth down and another punt coming for Carolina. As this second half breezes through. At least the Carolina and Tallahassee have kept things civil in the second half. You know, things can get chippy in games like this that mattered so much. The Skyhawks just didn't have it today. From the 17-yard line, return up to the 23. 253 to go, 252 to go in the third quarter. So we revisit the Teal Conference standings. Tallahassee's gonna get to seven and five. Dallas, with a victory over Santa Fe, now has an opportunity to get uh, fifth place in the conference to finish a respectable five and seven. And Orlando needs a victory now over Louisville to protect third place as Louisville and Tallahassee, or I'm sorry, uh, Orlando and Tallahassee split the season series this year as Dwayne Lane is now over 200 yards for the fourth time this season. But the pride after today will own the point differential tiebreaker over Orlando. Houston, meanwhile, they're still in a battle with uh, Oklahoma City and a win or loss by uh, Orlando could propel the Intimidators to second or all the way down to fourth. It's looking like third place is out of the question at the moment for Orlando. Uh, I guess I guess they would get third if both Orlando and Houston won. So uh, still lots of possibilities out there, but Tallahassee has certainly put the pressure on the Intimidators here in the second half across the uh, family of networks. Third down and 10 at the 23. 
Back to pass, West. West deep down the field, that pass is... Should have been picked. Instead, it'll be fourth down, and Tallahassee will have to punt. Back and forth, the punters go here in the third quarter. Pretty soon, they're going to be uh, singing us a lullaby. Our back to punt. Number 82 is deep Tallahassee will either be at Houston or at Louisville in the first round. We do know that. Tallahassee played each team just once this year. Turn to the 37. Actually, uh, I stand corrected. They played Louisville twice in their division. Louisville hammered the pride both times. 37 to 16 back in week two. Louisville built a 24-6 advantage in that game. In that game, Alexander West, four interceptions to just one touchdown. First and ten. From a balanced attack from Louisville. Eight, 183 yards and two touchdowns for Overstreet. 262 yards, two touchdowns from Skeletor P. Funk, who did not throw an interception in that first meeting. Pass is caught by Iba on the sideline. That'll bring up a first down. In the second meeting, it was a 24-7 loss for Tallahassee. Tallahassee actually had a 7-0 lead at the end of the first quarter in that game before falling apart. Dwayne Lane was shut down, 39 yards on 14 carries. Alexander West threw six interceptions. Overstreet had another 100-yard game. Skeletor P. Funk, three touchdowns, one interception. English no game. And actually, looking back at uh, Dwayne Lane's two games against Louisville, well, he did have 101 yards in the first meeting. But uh, has struggled to get going. In their lone meeting against Houston in week five, Houston won 30-27. to The game was at Houston, a neck-and-neck -neck battle. As a Tallahassee cut up to three in the final five minutes of that game, as uh, English picks up three, it'll bring up third down and seven. Tallahassee out, actually outgained Houston in that game. Dwayne Lane, 182 yards, two touchdowns. But West threw four more interceptions in that ball game. Darnell Black had a good day, 151 yards and two touchdowns. Third down and seven for Carolina. They've entered Tallahassee's side of the field. English on the carry. English will not get the first down. And these two teams appear to literally be running the clock out on this second half. This has to have been one of the quickest quarters in league history. Fun is away to end the third quarter. From the 14-yard line, Tallahassee up to the 17. Both teams go scoreless at the end of the third, or in the third quarter, rather. And Tallahassee still has the clamps on a playoff spot in the Teal Conference, 37-0. This is the SFL Network. Dwayne Lane picks up four. It'll bring up second down and six. In the three-game winning streak, Alexander West, nine touchdowns to seven interceptions, had five in that wacky game against Oklahoma City that was uh, that turned into a big-time shootout and a turnover fest at that. West on second down and six. He's still throwing and still completing passes. Kelvin Kidd out of bounds with the catch to the 37-yard line. West still does not have an interception. Only one other game this year did West not have a pick. That was against Santa Fe when uh, Tallahassee just uh, 
gashed the Gorillas 15 of 19, 305 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Numbers aren't as high for West today, but they just haven't needed them. West combined against Houston and Louisville this season has thrown 14 interceptions in three games. That pass is picked. That's his first tonight. And June Fierro returns up to the Tallahassee 37-yard line. So West cannot stay turnover free. But just think about that. 14 interceptions to just three touchdowns. So Tallahassee will come into the playoffs with a four-game winning streak, but against the opponents that they have to face. Alexander West has had some of his, has actually played his worst football of the season. Um, the only other game that he threw four interceptions in was against the Skyhawks in the previous meeting. But his worst games have come against the best teams. We're now under 10 minutes to go. Just 41 yards for Johnny English on 17 carries. A, the season low for English is 32, so he's just ahead of that mark. Second down and 13. Can Carolina crack the scoreboard? I don't believe we've had a shutout this season. Three receivers off the left side. Monroe going right. That pass is caught by Iba. We'll set up a third down and five. So Monday night, Sioux Falls and Cleveland. With the Vipers, the feel-good story of the year. I'm sure uh, Sioux Falls is the enemy to those who love an underdog. Four wins in a row for Cleveland after a two and five start. Tallahassee, four wins in a row after a three and five start as that run on third down and five loses five yards and Carolina is taken out of field goal range. Unbelievable. I don't know why Carolina has not tried to run more up the middle tonight with English. They're playing a, a, a just a just an absolutely bizarre game. Dreadful. All evening long. Eight and a half to go. Carolina to punt again. This one will hop out of bounds at the 10-yard line. What happened to the Skyhawks? Lost three games in a row. They were five and four in the driver's seat. And when you think about it, they were five and four. Tallahassee was three and five. They looked dead in the water. I mean, there was a game. It was easily a game and a half separation uh, with three games to go. Ta uh, Carolina looked like they had things all wrapped up. But then the loss to Louisville and the shocking loss to Dallas. If Carolina would have won that game, it still would have been a winner-take-all game this evening. Um, so the law loss did not hurt their playoff chances in any way, but just a surprising end to the season for a franchise that um, has two playoff appearances and no playoff victories. The Carolina franchise, the Cleveland franchise, I believe the only two franchises still without a playoff win. The Vipers would love. Uh, Viper supporters, I should say, uh, would love a uh, an opening playoff victory. As would any organization. Are back to punt. Number 82 is deep to receive. Don't let him get that point. Tallahassee punts it away. Carolina up to the 34. They're still scoreless. A very
very maddening game to watch. Gray Conference, only game going on, Baltimore and NYC. First and ten. From Crabs. At six and five, Sailors at two and nine coming in. English takes the handoff, pick up the four yards. Baltimore and NYC's results along with uh, all the other results on the night as Minerva picks up his third tackle from uh, Dallas, from Houston. And that Houston OKC game, I, I haven't talked about it enough tonight. I've just been sort of stunned by this Carolina-Tallahassee game. That Houston OKC game is bon just bonkers. I can't believe what uh, what we're seeing there in Texas. Second and six of the 30. Yeah, I know everything's bigger in Texas, but they're going to have to make a bigger scoreboard there at County Stadium. They can take Carolina's portion of the scoreboard. They won't be needing it tonight. Third down and four for English. Six and a, uh, for the Skyhawks after English's two-yard run. Again, SFO Post Game Show coming up next. We'll break down all five games of the night, and we'll let you know what it all means for the playoffs. Monroe's pass is knocked away, fourth down. is a 45-yard field goal to get Carolina on the board. That kick was almost blocked, and that kick is good. Unbelievable. The Skyhawks avoid the shutout. 37-3 with 6.06 to go. Skyhawks kick it away. On a return for Tallahassee up to the 29-yard line. West throwing, it's the fullback to start the drive, picks up two, keeps the clock moving under six minutes to go. 56 with the tackle. Let's go! Second and eight. Man, oh man, what a night. Post game show will break it all down. Dwayne Lane, one man to beat. Lane trying to push the lead further, gets to the Carolina 32. Billy Joe Gatlin saves the touchdown. And Dwayne Lane may have hit a career high with that run. See if we can get some updated numbers. Again, Lane's career high, 267. He's gone over 250 three times. Trying to make it a fourth. West to throw, deep shot down the field. That is in to a crowd. Pass incomplete. Julius O'Neill knocks it away. And O'Neill, who had the laughter against the pride in the first meeting against his old team, Probably wishing that he was back here in Florida tonight. Showtime. Second and ten 
from the Demon, 32 yarder. Tallahassee is in scoring position. And off the lane. Lane is put out of scoring position. Pick up a, a loss of three, rather. Batone on the tackle. And a 4.47 to go. Third and 13 from the Demon. 35 yards. Third and long for Tallahassee. Lane takes the handoff right side. It got one yard, so Martinez's kick could be from about 51 yards. 246 for Lane on 32 carries. So Lane is four yards shy of his fourth. 250-yard game of the season. That is a stunning stat right there. Martinez will come on to kick the field goal, try to give Tallahassee another 40-point game on their resume, averaging over 40 points per game in the last three weeks coming in. A 50-yard field goal is on the money. Now, granted, three of the four games Tallahassee's played in this four-game winning streak are against teams that did not make the playoffs. And against the lone playoff team they faced, they scored just 23 points in that 23-16 victory over Orlando. So against tougher competition, Tallahassee has not made things look as uh, life-threatening, but uh, still the achievement is uh, noted. Again, as you're watching all of the compelling action across the uh, SFL family of networks, and you're w wondering why you should stick with us, the SFL postgame show is coming up immediately following this game where we will break down all of the other four games, including this one, uh, of action in the SFL. And we'll also have a look ahead to uh, some first-round matchups that have been finalized tonight. As you looked at uh, Johnny English's horrible numbers. 20 carries, 42 yards, back to pass. Monroe incomplete. Sets up second down and 10 at the 22. Reserves are in for Tallahassee. Again, the least amount of points the Pride have given up this year is 16. I highly doubt they will give up uh, 13 points here in the final 330, but you never know. Second and 10. Ball at the 22 yard line. Another stunning thing about this game is not only did Carolina not come out in the first half and play well, but even when they got the ball to start the second half and you think, you know, okay, we've scored 31 points in a quarter before against this team as Monroe overshoots an intended receiver who was wide open. We scored 31 points in the second quarter against them last time. So we can do it again and have sort of a, a, a an attitude, a chip on their shoulder coming out of the third quarter. And they still came out and, and just didn't have it. Deep ball, Monroe. That pass is caught by Iba. Moves the chains up to the 45-yard line, keeps Carolina on the field. And the Skyhawks are going to get some yards against these uh, Tallahassee reserves. Monroe looking down the middle. That pass nearly picked off. The party is starting to begin here at Pride Park in Tallahassee. And the uh, hometown fans hope that uh, the Pride can win and another upset can happen and uh, maybe Tallahassee can host a playoff game 
if uh, Louisville ends up holding on against Orlando, that pass is caught down to the 25. Inside three minutes to go. Iba with that last catch back into the slot. Monroe to throw. Flips it out to Johnny English. He picks a three and has run out of bounds. Down to 245 to go in a ball game. Second and seven. Second and seven at the 22. Back to pass. Monroe takes a deep drop back, fires it over the middle. That is a first down to the 15-yard line. Tallahassee, or uh, Carolina rather, trying their hardest to uh, get their first touchdown on the board tonight. Monroe down the middle, passes off the hands of the intended receiver and incomplete. Drops have been an issue. That's the fullback's second drop of the night. Second and ten. Ball at the 15 yard line. Monroe, hit as he threw it. Did he get the ball away? No, he was sacked. Sack on a play. I thought he may have uh, th gotten to throw the ball away. Third down and four, 14. And Monroe's in trouble. Hit as he threw hard. That pass is incomplete. I think it may have been an official. Iba was the intended target, and that sets up fourth down. And Will Carolina just take the points here, or will they... Uh, Trying to keep getting a touchdown. Offense stays on the field. Carolina wants to go out holding their head high in some respect. Monroe back to pass. Down the middle into the end zone. Overshot the antenna receiver. Turnover on downs. Unbelievable. And Tallahassee needs two first downs to end the ball game. Again, Caesar Cannon was wide open and Monroe just overshot him. Monroe has had a terrible game. And we've seen Monroe have some pretty decent ball games. I mean, he's nothing to to uh, write home about. Nine touchdowns, ten interceptions. You know, the numbers aren't don't jump off the page. But Monroe's been a pretty decent quarterback for the Skyhawks this season, and, and he just has missed all the throws today. Believe the reserves now in for Tallahassee. So Dwayne Lane will not get his 250 yards. Although look at that run by the Dwayne Lane understudy. That takes us to the two-minute warning. Allen Urban with the first down on his first carry of the game. And one more first down will do it. Thanks for sticking with us through a through a shocking blowout. Tied for the biggest blowout of the season. And it just happened to be on the one night we thought we were going to get an incredible game, winner-take-all situation. And we just didn't. Hand off to Lang, or, uh, Urban. And Urban, did he get another first down? You bet he did. Alan Urban, give this guy a contract extension. Actually, Tallahassee's going to need one more first down. Dwayne Lane loving what he's seeing out of Urban. There's just been no stopping Tallahassee all night long. Just a field goal to show for the offensive production in the first half, but as Urban gets another carry, he'll be shut down at the line of scrimmage this time. It was 37 to nothing at the half if you uh, joined us late. From the very beginning of this game, there was no doubt that the Pride were going to take the final playoff spot in the Teal Conference. In a Teal Conference race that, that really could have been dramatic and compelling, uh, just sort of withered away. 
as uh, Santa Fe, they never materialized. Dallas could never get moving. Neutral zone infraction, number 73, defense. Oklahoma City had too many problems to deal with uh, to, to, to right their ship. They were all in, in, uh, in contention to try to take the spot away from Carolina a few weeks ago. Uh, but in the end, Tallahassee was the only team that really stepped up to the plate uh, quickly enough. And who knows, if uh, Tallahassee had not caught fire, we may be, we would be talking about the Dallas Law being in the playoffs. Because uh, Dallas, you know, they swept Carolina, and if, uh, Tallahassee would have ended up, you know, like a four and eight or something like that. We, things could have been very different. But Tallahassee, one of the final four left standing last year, has made their case, a very strong case, that they could be in the Final Four this year again. Especially considering Houston struggles tonight. How crazy is that? And off to Urban, that's gonna set up a fourth down, so Tallahassee's gonna get the ball, or a punt the ball away one more time. Again, post-game show is coming up next. We will break down all five games of the night. This one really the only game that, uh, that some could consider uneventful or not entertaining. Number 82 is deep to receive. From the 25-yard line, Carolina on a return up to the 28. A return of four yards on the play. Nice face mask, bro. Fifty-six seconds on the clock. First and ten. Forty to three. I just, I still can't believe it. Four receivers, three to the left, back to pass Monroe. Monroe fires down the field, pass caught, first down. No doubt about it, Cleveland and Sioux Falls should provide plenty more fireworks than uh, Carolina Tallahassee did tonight. As Monroe spikes the football with 39 seconds left. Second and ten from the Demons. Second and ten at the 40. Back to pass. Down the field. Monroe cannot make the connection. Looking for Cannon. Nice uh, bat of the ball away. Third down, ten. 35 seconds left. No timeouts. What an ugly game. Monroe to throw. Over the middle pass, Cott's going to be fourth down. Can't spike it. 28 seconds left on the clock. Monroe hurries the troops up to the line. 20 seconds. 19 seconds. Took a lot of time there. Monroe flip out the outside. That's caught. No, oh, they said he was out of bounds. Again, Caesar Cannon runs a route out of bounds. And uh, that's that's going to be it. I thought he caught this ball. Yeah, that looked like a catch. I think, unfortunately, we're going to have a booth review here. Gets the feet in right there. The replay booth will review the previous play. Whether the pass... Come on, officials. Down. Is that really necessary? I think that's a catch, and this may be the first time Carolina has 
coaching staff can cheer tonight. After review, the pass has been ruled complete. The catch was made prior to going out of bounds. First down. This place is dead silent. A lot of people have uh, emptied out, especially in the upper deck. Still a lot of people, though, here are waiting to celebrate, waiting to party with their Tallahassee pride, who have climbed from all the way back at 3-5 and five when it looked like Tallahassee just had no answer and the Sahara Desert offense that was just so widely talked about in the, in the offseason by Frank Gooden was dead. Monroe's Hail Mary pass is intercepted in the end zone. I believe that's the fifth interception of the night for Jamison Monroe. He had just 10 all season and Troy Minerva who came in on the play gets the pick and I believe that is Minerva's third interception of the night. That's a hat trick for Troy Minerva. Grayson Rivers had the other two interceptions. And this final kneel down will make it official. The Tallahassee Pride are going to the Teal Conference playoffs. And coming up on the SFL Post Game Show, we'll preview some of these first round matchups as we now have new information that allows us to do so. 40 to 3, Tallahassee over Carolina. Post Game Show is coming up next. Welcome back to our SFL Studios SFL Post Game Report. Let's break down all of the action in a very, very busy day in the SFL. We start with the blowout that you just witnessed. 40-3, to Tallahassee all over Carolina. The Pride clinched the final playoff spot in the Gray Conference and even improved their seating today as we break down the final numbers. Julian Monroe, 18-40. of 40. For 180 yards, Jamison Monroe, I beg your pardon, 18 of 40, 180 yards, five interceptions, no touchdowns, a miserable, absolutely miserable day for Carolina's offense. Johnny English, 45 yards on 21 carries. Yuya Iva, the lone bright spot, caught a couple of balls in garbage time, 117 yards on seven catches. Alexander West, 17 of 25, 186 yards, one touchdown, one interception, nothing flashy there, but Dwayne Lane was the story. 33 carries, 251 yards, three touchdowns. Tallahassee is now 4-0 when Dwayne Lane runs for over 250 yards. And in all four of those games, Tallahassee has scored at least 35 points. The Pride averaging over 40 points per game during their four-game winning streak. Grayson Rivers, two interceptions to go along with his seven tackles. How did Tallahassee help their seating? Well, Orlando helped them out, losing to Louisville 38-27. Tallahassee wins the point def uh, differential tiebreaker, meaning Orlando is now the number four seed and will play Louisville in the first round of the playoffs. Louisville finishes 11-1 on 11-game winning streak. Skelter P. Funk, 26 of 36, 337 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. David Overstreet, 21 carries, 176 yards, and one touchdown. Lawrence Kirkland, another big, impressive day, seven catches, 176 yards, two touchdowns for uh, the second-year receiver, at least in Louisville, uh, former Honolulu legend Lawrence Kirkland. Big day there. Uh, Orlando hung with Louisville. Neck and neck was 21-21 of the half. Louisville pulled away in the third quarter. Connor Pyatt, 33 of 46, 326 yards. One touchdown was picked off just one time. Zach Parker, 25 carries, 132 yards and two touchdowns. Nathan Chambers, 148 yards on seven grabs, but did not reach the end zone. That was important for Louisville. Take a breath before we get to this next score. So with Orlando losing, Tallahassee winning, Houston clinches the number two spot in the Teal Conference. But I tell you what, they weren't ready for this. 62 to 59, the
the highest scoring game in SFL history. And it was wild, folks. Joseph Redfeather, eight touchdowns, 37 of 50 for 591 yards through two picks in the game. Johnny Beerme, 192 yards on seven grabs and three scores. That's got to be career highs all the way around there. And Austin Skolander grabbed three touchdowns, 135 yards on nine catches. Courtney Coleman, 22 of 31, 488 yards, four touchdowns, three picks. But one of those interceptions to Billy Joe Casper, which set up the game-winning 52-yard field goal by Guido Trace to give Oklahoma City their third win of the year. Darnell Black, 23 carries, 265 yards, and four touchdowns. D.R. Sim, 10 catches, 377 yards, and four touchdowns of his own. Welcome, finally, to Houston, D.R. Sim. Houston could not have asked for a better day out of their offense. Finally, their offense produces big numbers, and they end up losing the game. A, a very uh, bizarre day in Houston indeed. The Teal Conference ends like this. The number one-seeded Louisville Wolfpack will host the number four-seeded Orlando Intimidators. Louisville won both meetings in the regular season. The Houston Hyenas, the number two seed, will host the number three seed Tallahassee Pride. They met just once this year, a 30-27 win over uh, for Houston, I should say, uh, towards the beginning of the season. Teal Conference is set. Devastation for the D.C. Dragons as the NYC Sailors eliminate D.C. by upsetting Baltimore this, uh, this evening, 23-17. Carter Peters, 21 of 32, 238 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Philo Celestino, 126 yards on 22 carries at a real solid day. Sultan Muhammad could not be stopped, 160 yards on 10 grabs and one touchdown. My, uh, Mike Dazzo, 37 of 48, 350 yards, with just one touchdown on the board, one interception. Elijah Bishop had just two catches in this game. Elliott Snyder, 65 yards, 15 carries and a score. Wayne Inzer, 63 yards, five catches and a touchdown. So D.C. is out. Baltimore has locked themselves into the number four seed. They will play Minneapolis in the first round, meaning that either Cleveland or Queen City will face Sioux Falls at Sioux Falls in the 2-3 matchup as uh, the Sparrows clinch the number two seed with Baltimore's loss. The only other game on the docket today, Dallas improves to 5-7, and seven, ends up fifth in the Teal Conference. They beat Santa Fe 17-16. Final numbers on Matt Wilson, 22 of 34. 261 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Juan Bosco, seven catches, 99 yards, and a touchdown. Carlo Montero, fantastic game, 13 tackles, even forced a fumble and then recovered it later. Murdoch Mock, another efficient 27 of 33. He sure turned his season around. 239 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Mick Hardcastle running hard. 32 carries, 144 yards and a score. And Ed Rebrabi, another back-to-back uh, -back good games for Ed Rebrabi. Nine tackles, three passes defended, and two tackles for loss for Dallas. So again, summarizing the playoffs, Tallahassee will face Houston. Louisville will face Orlando. Baltimore will face Minneapolis, and Queen City or Cleveland will be at Sioux Falls. Cleveland needs a win and a Queen City loss. Queen City just needs a win over Minneapolis, and they're in. What a wild day of SFL action. Thank you all for being a part of it. It's been a presentation of the Simulation Football League and the SFL Network. And for all of our crew, I'm Cameron Irvine saying good night, and we'll see you Monday for the dramatic conclusion of SFL Season 6.